Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. Microphones are often the unsung hero of audio recording. Lashings of praise go out to the performance, the tone and the feeling of the voice or instrument on record, and rightly so, but the microphone is often a bigger part of the final product than many realise or give credit for. In fact, choosing the right microphone for the task can make or break the take. I'm here at 42 Gear Street to examine the two most common microphone types you'll likely come across, dynamic and condenser. We're going to look at the differences in construction and performance and see when it's beneficial to use each. But before we delve into that, perhaps it's proper that we firstly examine the basic fundamental principles behind how every microphone works. At their most basal construction, microphones consist of a thin surface, or diaphragm, which moves when sound pressure waves are incident upon it. When something makes noise, it sends pressure waves through the air, which are powerful enough to cause a thin membrane to vibrate in kind. The movement of the diaphragm is then converted into an electric signal by some method, most simplistically by using a coil and magnet arrangement. The movement of the diaphragm perturbates a coil in the presence of a magnetic field, inducing a voltage in the coil which we can measure as an electric signal. It's essentially the reverse process of a speaker. In fact, you can make a very simple microphone of this type using nothing more than a paper cup, some dental floss, some copper wire and a magnet. My friend Leo over at Leo Makes has a great instructional video of how to cobble one of these together for yourself. I can't believe I'm talking to a cup. What you are hearing right now is my voice vibrating the rear surface of this paper cup. The floss is punched through the bottom, held taut with a magnet tied along its length. When placed within the coil of wire, the moving magnet induces a signal in the coil which is picked up by my audio interface. Now this is a very crude arrangement and you'd be unlikely to track a record with this audio quality, but it does show you just how simple the concept of a microphone is at its base level. And here's what it sounds like if I trade out that paper cup for a plastic one. The goal here is to use a more lightweight, flexible material for the diaphragm in the hope of getting more output and a slightly higher fidelity. I'll let you be the judge of whether this experiment has been a success. However, if we want our microphones to sound better than this, we need to start making them out of higher quality, higher tolerance components. Fortunately for us audiophiles, professional microphone companies don't make their microphones out of paper cups and dental floss. I've tracked down Valerie and Gabriel from Bluet Microphones to find out just how much engineering goes into their products. Now, I managed to make my own microphone from a paper cup and a piece of string. How different is the engineering of Lewitt microphones to my DIY method? Well, honestly, you got pretty close there. Maybe a paint job and halfway there. Oh, wow, that's impressive, because <laughs> I thought it wasn't very good at all. Uh, honestly, I was surprised about how good it sounds. Yeah. Um, I would love to take a look at the frequency response and the uh, <laughs> self-noise uh, level. Absolutely, we should put it through a scope yeah. and get some real data on that. I mean, it sounds a bit like underwater, Mm -hmm. And I think part of the um, secret to get it sounding better would be if you, instead of moving the magnet, would start to move the coil. A microphone is, is just a well-tuned system of all and all the parts matter. I mean, the most important part is obviously the capsule, but the conversion happens. And it's also the, the part of the microphone that gives the most uh, sound, just the most influence on the sound. Then it goes on to the capsule suspension, um, the housing, the grill, and compared to your microphone, I mean, trying it on snare drum would probably <laughs> be <laughs> interesting. If it gets a hit, we'll, we'll see. So what you're saying is there's a lot more design aspects that I need to consider if I want a paper cup to sound as good as your microphones. Probably, yes. My paper cup microphone was an imperfect example of a dynamic microphone. Dynamic in this context means movement. The voice coil of a dynamic microphone is directly connected to the diaphragm, which means that the voltage generated is in dynamic response to the incident sound waves. This heavy diaphragm makes dynamic microphones exceptionally robust against high sound pressure levels, but necessarily has to sacrifice some transient detail to accommodate this. So dynamic microphones, what are the benefits and the drawbacks of such a design? Well, the benefits for dynamic microphones are obviously that they can take a lot of abuse in, in terms of mechanical stress, um, environmental influences. Um, here, in, for instance, we have a spring steel, so if you hit it with the drumstick, it shouldn't matter. So that's a big plus for, for dynamics. Um, one thing that often gets mentioned, which actually is not true, is the high SPL mm -hmm. stuff. But dynamics can take a lot of high SPL, but condensers can do too. Broad misconception about condenser microphones. 
Yeah, the drawbacks of dynamic microphones are that since the membrane has to move the coil, they have um, slower transient response mm -hmm. and they are less sensitive to the high frequencies. So what you also need to know about uh, dynamic microphones is that they are passive, so they don't need the 48 volt phantom power. So I can use them without having any specialist equipment that can send voltage down the cable. Exactly. Um, what I have here is a dynamic capsule. As you can see here, there's the membrane and it has a, a dome like a speaker and some riffles, which keep the membrane from flopping, I guess. Yeah, so, so it's, stiffen it's, it out. It's allowing it to move in the proper direction and yes. not just flop about all over the place with the sound pressure waves. Here you can see the coil, mm -hmm. which uh, gets moved around the magnet and there you get your signal. Dynamic microphones are typically cardioid, which literally means heart-shaped. They pick up strongly sources from in front of them, less from the sides, and reject sound from behind. This makes them perfect in live applications where there's a lot of sound bleed from other instruments, and you'll often find them being used to close mic guitar cabs, drums, and on vocals. In order for dynamic microphones to effectively reject sound and function correctly at all frequencies, sound needs to reach the back of the microphone. If you have sound coming from the back, yeah. It's built in a way that the sound uh, hits the membrane on the back and the front at the same time. So there's no pressure difference. If they come at the same time, it doesn't move at all. If you talk on it from the front, the, the sound wave hits the membrane first, and then you make it travel through tunnels and labyrinth and some friction to slow it down, and it comes uh, with a delay. So there's a difference in pressure and you get a signal. And on this one, you get about uh, 25 dB real rejection. If, if you have a cardioid and you talk to it from the front, you get a lot of signal. If, if you talk from the side, you get less signal because the cardioid pattern is shaped like this. And if you're on stage and you have your monitor down there, blowing up this direction, the microphone is least sensitive in this direction and you don't get feedback. By porting the rear of the capsule, the diaphragm listens to sounds from the back. A lot of careful geometry goes into ensuring that the sound incident on the rear of the microphone reaches both sides of the diaphragm at the same time, cancelling out entirely and leaving only sounds from the front of the mic being picked up. This is why it's incredibly important not to hold a vocal microphone like this. By covering the rear of the pop shield, the microphone can no longer effectively reject sound, causing it to feed back and drastically changing its frequency response. But don't just take my word for it. Briefly, what does cupping a microphone do for its frequency response? Well, it makes a microphone sound awesome. At least that's what everybody on YouTube keeps telling me. All the commenters and what. Well, it sounds great when I do it. When it sounds great, like do it. Yes, it sounds fucking awesome. It sounds fucking awesome. It sounds like fucking metal. <laughs> fucking idiots. So the MTP 440 DM is our dynamic instrument microphone. It's great on guitar caps and other high SPL stuff, and it has a full-bodied open sound compared to like traditional choices, it has a better lower end response. So dynamic microphones sound like the ideal choice for live environments and on stage where they can take a beating and really handle those high sound pressure levels. But if I was in the studio and I maybe wanted something a bit different, what options do you have? Well, first choice would be condensers. There are small diaphragm condensers and large diaphragm condensers. The difference is really just the diameter of the diaphragm. Obviously you uh, use um, dynamics also in the studio and you can use our condensers on stage. They get used a lot because they can take it. But yeah, the detail definitely is um, much more precise and you get way more out of it if you use a condenser microphone. Condenser is an obsolete term for capacitor. A capacitor is a charge storing device consisting of two electrically conductive plates in close proximity. When a potential difference is applied across these plates, a charge accumulates in the capacitor. How close those plates are together changes the capacitance and ultimately how much charge current is generated. Sure, you know we unscrewed this already, so it's easier to open. Here you can see a, a large diaphragm condenser and as you can see only one side is contacted, which means it has a fixed cardioid. That looks very different from what we saw with the dynamic microphone capsule. What's going on here? Compared to the dynamic, here you have uh, the diaphragm and it's very close to the back plate. And when it's uh, turned on, 
all condensers need phantom power, 48 volts. Um, you have roughly 100 volts in there. And the membrane can move much more freely because it doesn't have to move a coil. So you get a lot more detail and you also get an extended frequency response, especially in the high end. In a condenser microphone, the diaphragm forms the front plate of a capacitor, while the solid brass plate forms the rear. Sound pressure waves vibrate the diaphragm, changing the distance between the two plates, varying the capacitance and generating corresponding charge and discharge currents. This capacitive effect is equivalent, yet more sophisticated, than the moving coil we saw with the dynamic microphone. The surface of the diaphragm requires to be electrically conductive for the capacitive effects to manifest, but the diaphragm itself needs to be very flexible. For this, we make it out of gold sputtered mylar. What you have here is um, the diaphragm, which is made out of mylar. It's a very uh, rugged material that you can get very thin, mm -hmm. and it doesn't uh, deteriorate over time. Best choice for this, and then it's gold sputtered, which is a really thin layer of some atoms of, of gold just to make it um, conductive. This combination of lightweight flexible plastic and atomic thickness gold coating provides an electrically conductive diaphragm which is extremely sensitive to sound pressure waves. In terms of microphone engineering, we're now a million miles away from the bottom of our paper cup. In this case, since it's a um, fixed cardioid, the, the back, back diaphragm is passive only. It's for um, stiffening, giving the right volume, and the back plate, here you can see the holes. This is actually the, the most intricate and hardest part to design. So you mentioned there's 48 volts phantom power mm -hmm. and then it scales up to 100 volts? Around, yeah. So how's it doing that? Well, you have a circuit board in there. The first thing you want to do after the um, signal comes out of the capsule is put it to uh, the high set board, it's called. The, the signal coming out of here is very unstable and you want to get get it converted, get the impedance down so that you can use it. And then the next thing is um, you balance the signal because balanced output obviously uh, has its benefits. A high voltage, low current output isn't robust enough to leave the microphone. So an impedance changing circuit is incorporated into condenser microphones to buffer the signal for use with other equipment. All of this requires voltage and condensers are typically supplied with plus 48 volts phantom power via the interface, DI box or recorder using pins 2 and 3 on an XLR cable. But condenser technology doesn't just stop there. The biggest difference in holding patterns is between small diaphragm condensers and large diaphragm condensers because small diaphragm condensers just they have very tight patterns across the frequency range. The large diaphragm microphones has better transient response than dynamic microphones and small diaphragm microphones have like even better transient response than large diaphragm microphones. Yeah, it's easier to place on overheads and because it's also very lightweight, you don't not gonna get any problems with your stands because that sometimes happens. Oh, wow. There's no weight to that at all. No, no, yeah. it's made out of aluminium. Actually, with this microphone, there is another advantage because they have like the the it's like the two sound characteristics. So you can choose between like um, um, airy sound, and you can have a flat sound, which means very highly realistic sound reproduction. That's exactly what you need if you're recording orchestras and pianos and drum overheads, right? Um, yeah, but it's also very cool on acoustic guitar. Because there it's great if you if you have you can choose between two sounds actually with one microphone. While large diaphragm condensers have the advantage of very low self noise and open up the response at lower frequencies, which allows for vocals and voice to sound very rich and beautiful, small diaphragm condensers have a more consistent response across all frequencies and allow for a more accurate translation of transients into electric signal. This sees large diaphragm condensers as the weapon of choice for capturing vocals or solo instruments which benefit from a more singing performance, while small diaphragm condensers are utilised for capturing ensembles or detail work where the preservation of real sound is most important. Well, aside from Lewitt microphones being very aesthetically beautiful, well made, robust and great sounding, what's the advantage of buying one of your microphones? I think that's pretty much it. You summed it up quite well. There's nothing more to say. I mean, one point would be um, they're easy to work with. Just get the sound quickly. <laughs>
Hopefully that's given you some insight into the differences between dynamic and condenser microphones. Remember, there's no definitive best microphone. It all comes down to your application, what instrument you're recording, what environment you're recording in, and what sort of sounds you want to achieve as an end result. I want to say thanks to Valerie and Gabriel from Lua for helping me out on this one. Lua offer a great range of microphones which have robust build quality, excellent sounds, and are very affordable indeed. So if you want to grab some for yourself, then links will be in the description below. Also, big thanks to Henning from HP42 for allowing me to desecrate his house like this. Do you want to where, where are we? We're doing this little section here. I want to say thanks to Valerie and Gabriel from Lua for helping me out with this one. Description below. See description below. Description below. That's all for now, though, guys. Keep it loud. And uh, when in Rome, or Germany as it is, animals at the end. And don't fucking do this!